321 of the Trump administration brings a stunning allegation against former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who you remember just days ago pleading guilty to lying to the FBI about uh, contacting Russia's ambassador back during the transition. Well, NBC News reports that according to an unnamed whistleblower, Mike Flynn sent a text to a former business associate 11 minutes after Donald Trump was sworn in as president, saying Russian sanctions would be, quote, ripped up once Trump was inside the White House, and that a U.S.-Russian business plan to build nuclear power plants in the Middle East was, quote, good to go. This whistleblower says Flynn sent those texts while he was still up there on the dais, while the president was delivering his inaugural address, and the timing of the text means, by our calculations, it was during this portion of the president's speech. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never ever let you down. <laughs> America will start winning again, winning like never before. The speech where the president later contended it did not rain, the speech known forever as the American Carnage Address. The whistleblower gave that account to members of the House Oversight Committee in June. Well, today, Maryland Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings laid out the allegations against Flynn in a letter to the committee's Republican chair, Trey Gowdy. Cummings had delayed releasing this information until today, notably at the request of Robert Mueller. Cummings had asked that the committee support Tina Flynn, the business associate, the White House, and others involved in that alleged plan. And there are more developments in the Russia investigation today. Donald Trump Jr. questioned behind closed doors and under oath by the House Intelligence Committee for about eight hours. This is him leaving the Trump Hotel this morning. This is a second go-round for him on the Hill. Latest round of questioning seemed to focus on what he told his father about how that now famous June 2016 Trump Tower meeting came to be. A source with knowledge of Donald Trump Jr.'s testimony to the House Intel Committee tells us at NBC News, Trump Jr. said it was 29-year-old White House Communications Director Hope Hicks who he spoke with on the day that 2016 meeting became public and that she acted as an intermediary to relate comments to the boss, the president. This source says the younger Trump did speak by phone the next day with his father as well as attorneys. The committee's ranking member, the top Democrat, Adam Schiff of California, was less than pleased with the answers that Mr. Trump gave the panel. There was one significant area, though, uh, where he declined to answer. Um, he acknowledged having discussed the June 9th meeting uh, and the emails that went into establishing that meeting uh, after those emails became public. Um, he acknowledged discussing that matter with his father. Uh, but refused to answer questions about that discussion on the basis of a claim of attorney-client privilege. In my view, there is no attorney-client privilege that protects a discussion between father and son. As I understand it, this particular conversation for which they were claiming privilege took place after the emails became public. Also, two new polls from CBS News tonight give us a sense of the public's thinking on all of this, the Russia investigation writ large. 67% say Michael Flynn's guilty plea is a serious matter for the Trump administration. Also, 67% say it's likely Trump advisors had improper dealings with Russia. With all that, let's bring in the members of our lead-off panel tonight. Philip Rucker, White House Bureau Chief for The Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst. Anita Kumar, White House correspondent for McClatchy Newspapers. And John Heilman, veteran reporter and political journalist and an MSNBC national affairs analyst. Uh, John, home team advantage, you go first. You're here with us in New York. What, what am I missing about Donald Trump Jr. claiming attorney-client privilege, which would work if you and I were each other's lawyers, we would have a private conversation right. that no one else could get at. Right. How does it work the way he's applying it? Can you help me? Well, he seems to be claiming uh, that, that because there was his attorney was in the room at the same time that he had the conversation with his father, that that conversation is therefore privileged. 
That, as you know, even though I'm fairly certain you're not a lawyer, and nor am I. I am not. We have, we have spent enough time with lawyers to know that our conversations in the company of lawyers are not legally privileged. Some of my best friends. Our lawyers. And that, and that you don't get the, 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 the attorney-client privilege by the transitive property. That's not how it works in a court of law. I think a, a friend of mine who is a, a, a longtime uh, judicial staffer, someone who worked in the Senate Judiciary Committee for a long time, worked in the Clinton Justice Department in the antitrust division, tweeted out tonight that it seemed to him that what was going on was that every time that Donald Trump Jr. opens his mouth, he gets himself into greater legal or political jeopardy. And so his lawyers at some point must have just thrown up their hands and said, just claim privilege, we'll figure it out later. That's about, that's about the only logical sense you can make of what he did of the claim that he made today. Mr. Rucker, uh, as they say, that sound you heard was a bus going over a 29-year-old White House communications director. Oh, How did uh, the role of Hope Hicks as intermediary in this critical story, do you think, come about? Well, uh, she was on the plane, Air Force One, with President Trump. They were coming home uh, this past summer from the G20 summit in Germany, uh, where Hope Hicks was a among a number of advisors helping the president help his son uh, craft a statement to explain this meeting at Trump Tower. That statement turned out to be uh, misleading at best. You might call it false. Uh, and, and it was the president, based on reporting that we did at the Washington Post earlier this year, that actually dictated the substance of that statement. Hope Hicks served as an intermediary uh, to help put that statement together. And as we know now today from Donald Trump Jr.'s testimony, uh, she was the person who was speaking on the phone with Donald Trump Jr. We have told her story on this broadcast, uh, started life uh, professionally as a model, came into the Trump orbit where merchandise was concerned, spent some time modeling yeah. for Ralph Lauren and was one of the first hires and was with Donald Trump uh, Philip, correct me if I'm wrong, from the very first campaign event remains on the White House staff in this um, uh, right. uh, senior uh, position. But as we've surmised, she may also have some leisure, le legal exposure now. That's right. You know, she's one of the most important and powerful figures in the Trump orbit and in this White House. Despite her age and inexperience in Washington and politics, uh, she has the president's ear. He asks her advice on any number of issues, from policy issues to political issues to dealing with family matters, such as the statement that Donald Trump Jr. would put out. Uh, she's been in the room for a lot of conversations that I think Robert Mueller uh, would like to hear her version of events on, and that's one of the reasons that he's asked uh, reportedly. Uh, for her to, to come talk to him as part of this investigation. She's hired her own lawyer. She's one of many Trump advisors and staffers who's had to go out and, and hire her, his or her own counsel mm -hmm. to deal with all of these questions and these inquiries. So, Anita, I need a reality check from you. Tonight on Fox News, I heard Congressman Mark Meadows, Republican North Carolina, talk about the need for a special counsel to investigate the special counsel. This role... <laughs> It, this is out there trying to diminish and attack the Mueller effort, whether it's the cost of it, the intent of it, the scope of it. Is it, is it going to leave a mark? Does it have traction, do you think? Yeah, I mean, definitely the Republicans or many Republicans are definitely pushing back. I don't know how much traction it has. Obviously, they're in charge. They have the majority, so they can, you know, do a lot of things. I mean, what you didn't mention earlier is that the Republican or the Republican uh, who's a congressman, Congressman Conway, who's running the House inquiry could have pushed back on Donald Trump Jr. today and said, you need to answer that question. But what we heard afterwards was him saying that, actually, I think Donald Trump Jr. has answered all our questions, and we're fine with how he's answered them. So, I mean, the Republicans, particularly in this case today, did not push back, but they could have. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.